Hello everyone and welcome back to our show. Today we are kicking off another series, series four of Simple Staples. We're gonna be making a really simple one pot pasta. It's ideal if you're looking for something to make but you're in a hurry. You can essentially put it on the stove, walk away, go do your thing, come back, maintain that low heat, no burning will occur. It is an incredible, incredible recipe, super easy to follow and I cannot wait to show you how we do it. If you're interested in any of our other recipes, make sure you, you check out our previous series of the Simple Staples, which you can find here on our IGTV. Okay, so starting this recipe is super, super duper easy. I feel like I say that in every one of these Simple Staples series, but it's true, they're so easy. So what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna grab our favorite pan. I like using one that is obviously deep enough to make something like pasta, but you don't want it to be something that sticks. And this is the new Our Place pan, it's not sponsored, but this thing does not stick. And I haven't made a one pot pasta in it yet, but I'm pretty confident that this is gonna do the trick and it's gonna be perfect. So make sure you just grab your favorite nonstick pan. We're gonna go in first with a little bit of olive oil. And of course you can find the full recipe below, so don't panic, just follow along here. I'm gonna do around a tablespoon. So we're gonna go in with a little pasta, serving Andrew and I at home traditionally, and then plus leftovers. So just go in with as many pasta noodles or your choice of pasta as you think will work. I'm gonna do, honestly, I'm so bad at grams, but that thick and if you want you can split it so if you want you can split the pasta i don't traditionally because i want to get the full twirling effect and you want the long spaghetti so we're just going to put it all in and don't worry if it still hangs over the edge that's fine as it gets really soft it will eventually just end up in the pot perfectly okay i've got some fresh parsley here so i'm just going to break it up with my hands around a handful if you have cilantro at home dill basil oregano, sage, whatever it is, throw it in and then just cater your pasta to the flavors that you're sort of working with. So I'm doing more of a visit to the Mediterranean. I didn't have any fresh oregano, but I figured that parsley would be perfect. We're gonna go in with some nutritional yeast, which is my favorite nutty, cheesy ingredient. It is vegan, it is fortified with B12. It's really good, it's yummy. Just a sprinkling of salt, my friends, because I'm gonna be using vegetable stock paste in this recipe just to give it that added depth. And it is quite salty, so I wanna avoid over salting this dish. I'm gonna do some pepper and some red pepper chili flakes for some added heat. This is entirely optional, so if you're sensitive to heat, don't do it. I'm gonna throw in some cherry tomatoes. I'm going in whole, you could have them, you can quarter them, do whatever you want. This is for you to have fun with, because I'm telling you, you throw this in the pot, as long as you get the pasta to liquid ratio properly, kind of fixed, uh, you're gonna be good to go. So we're throwing in the tomato. I'm gonna go in with a fresh tomato as well. I've also got this beautiful, beautiful, artichoke, which I'm so excited about because this is gonna add another element of saltiness. This Mediterranean is just salt and fabulousness, so this is gonna be perfect. I use canned artichokes that have already been marinated. Feel free to use whatever works for you. You can use marinated in brine. You can use fresh, that might be a lot of extra work, but I wouldn't omit artichokes entirely if you're going down the Mediterranean route. So we're just gonna go in with those. And then, sun-dried tomato. I think I might give these like a little rough chop. Let's give them a rough chop. We want them to kind of break down a little bit in the pasta. And I think that they normally would, to be honest, because it will cook down with all these beautiful ingredients. But I don't actually want it to end up being a situation where you have a bite of the pasta and you just get a big chunk of um, sun-dried tomato. So we're just gonna chop it into bite-sized pizzas. Another additional ingredient that I forgot today um, isn't actually in the recipe, but you could totally put it in the recipe, would be, I'm gonna try, olives. Black olives, green olives, your favorite. Kalamata would be perfect. Just toss them in. And then we're gonna go in with that vegetable stock paste I told you about. I like using the brand called Better Than Bouillon. It's so, so good. Also not sponsored, just wanna share the love. I'm pretty addicted to this stuff and it really transforms a dish. 
I'm not just saying that because it's in this recipe. It's really good and it's actually in a lot of my recipes. If you don't have better than bouillon, just use your favorite vegetable stock in replacement of water. We're gonna grate a little bit of zucchini into this bad boy. Let me grab my grater. So I don't know if you remember watching my last recipe, but we added zucchini to the dish and it's so transformative in ways that it brings flavor, but it's also a really fun way to add more vegetables to your kids' dishes. If they're picky eaters, they'll never know this is here. I know that there's a lot of other vegetables in this dish and they might see it, but the zucchini is definitely gonna be one of those things that's gonna add punch. It's gonna be a good way to add greens and it's super easy. So we added, I don't know, about a cup and a half to two cups of grated zucchini. What are we gonna go in with next? Fresh Parmesan. You can use vegan Parmesan if you don't want to use fresh. I'm gonna do a tomato for my dad's garden. So I'm just gonna remove the, and I always recommend salting your tomatoes before using just a little bit to heighten that flavor. This is an OG move on behalf of my Greek roots. Trust me when I say this is game changing. So just a wee little bit. Big fat sea salt. Okay. We're ready to add the liquid and I promise you this is gonna be so fast, you're gonna love this recipe. I almost forgot one of the key ingredients. Garlic. You gotta put the garlic in the one pot pasta. So, if this would just work. I love garlic. I probably use garlic in excess. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. It's great for your immunity, so I'm here for it. Ooh. Garlic presses are probably one of my favorite inventions. I have horror memories from when I was young and having to sit on top of the countertop in the kitchen and help my mom peel garlic. And I feel like garlic presses had already been invented, so my mother was definitely toying with me, making me do this manually. Okay, so we went in with four cloves. Do what works for you. I love it spicy and hot and garlicky and earthy. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up a can of coconut milk. I'm gonna add around half of it and we're gonna do two to three cups of water. Full fat coconut milk is good. Light coconut milk is good. Out of a carton is perfectly fine. Just do what you have access to. There's no wrong way, I promise. So we're just gonna put half. It's actually a larger lump here because I had it in the fridge so that actually works out perfectly because we're getting more of the liquid and less of the fat. Um, in this case we just want it to be liquidized and I forgot that I had put this in the fridge so there's no problem just as long as it's liquid. So before I add in the water I'm going to go in with some fresh deep water greens kale. Um, I'm going to add half now and a little bit more later. It's obviously going to wilt but I want there to be a nice element of greenery when we serve it because we all know we eat with our eyes. And this is gonna be so good, it's not gonna matter that there's green in it. So we're all good here. We've gone in with a little bit of that kale that I mentioned. We're just gonna add some water now. Use a filtered water. This is filtered. We're just gonna add about a cup or two. Let's start with two. So, so the key here is understanding your ratio of pasta to water. I'll have the exact descriptions for you below to follow. For right now, I'm just gonna play around the concept of me having no clue how much pasta I added here. I just know that it's gonna feed Andrew and I. I'm gonna put a little bit more water. Yeah, we should be good. And then just make sure that as you're cooking, you're testing for salt, which I don't think you will have any problems with because we've got the parm, the artichoke, and the better than bouillon. So we're just gonna pop this on the stove on a low heat and we're gonna let it simmer for about 25 minutes. This is gonna be good. I need you to come look, Eli. Show our friends how amazing this pasta looks. Oh my gosh, and I told y'all, like no stick whatsoever. Like not even in the slightest. Not even close to sticking. Okay, Eli, my true taste tester. You're getting a bowl here, honey. If you're at home, I would suggest adding a few things because we really just want to punch it up with flavor. I've tested it for salt, we're good, but I want a little bit of acidity because it's so important. Just heightens flavor. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of that. And we're good for oil. 
So we're just gonna serve it up to Eli on a nice little bowl. And then I'm gonna add a touch more kale just for color. <laughs> that is what we call food porn. We're filming in a different kitchen today. You'll find out a lot more about this soon. But basically, I forgot to bring proper utensils for serving. So we've got one fork between all of us and during COVID, obviously that's not ideal. So we're trying to hunt some down. Okay, Eli, I'm gonna get you all the goods after this. Are you an artichoke fan? Uh, too sure. <laughs> You'll like them, I promise. Have I ever served you anything you don't like? No. Okay, that's good. He's also on camera, so he can't say yes to that. A few more greens because y'all know I like making things look cute. There you go, my darling. Do you want shaved Parmesan or are you okay? I'm um, okay. 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 This was a success. It was so easy. I cannot explain to you how creamy and delicious it was. It is versatile in ways that you wouldn't believe because you can put any ingredients you want into this pot. Follow the instruction below and on my blog post that you'll find in terms of the ratio of pasta and water. That's gonna be the kicker. Just wanna make sure that you have enough water for your pasta to absorb all the beautiful flavors and you essentially end up with something that seems like it's been cooking, cooking for hours. It's so good. Like I mentioned before, all of our recipes are on the IGTV page here, titled Simple Staples, and they all live on the website and the app at foodbymaria.com. Check them out, let us know what you wanna see next. We only have three more episodes coming for you, or maybe even two, and then from there, we're gonna shift and move into more festive Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving, Christmas, themed recipes, which you can make all around. They're just gonna be downright comfort food and amazing. But thank you again for joining us. I'm gonna keep eating this pasta because it's so good. And let us know if you make it. Always leave us a comment and a star review on the blog. Thank you all so much. Thanks.